Hello, Catherine Bearstein here. There's something awesome about Power BI that I want to share with everyone because it's really an incredible feature. Um, for years, I've struggled with PowerShell and LDAP to get app to get Active Directory data out into a spreadsheet to be able to analyze it. Well, now you can get that in Power BI, and you can refresh it. And if you have the gateway, the on-premise gateway, as I have here, it will refresh when you publish it um, up to the Power BI service. So it's it's really pretty awesome. So you go get data, and I just type in Active Directory because it's hard to you know it's way down on the list. And whatever domain you're in, it should show you that domain. Here's mine, bluemetaldev.com. So I say OK. Now, if you have a ton of subdomains, you'll see more listed here. I only have one. So I go to this and um, choose the computer object because I want to find out information about my workstations and servers. So I'm going to load it. Now, if you've ever used um, JSON data, this is going to seem you're going to recognize this because JSON data also um, gives you these. That's going to take a second here. Okay, let's go into edit queries. JSON data also gives you these records, and that's mean it's hierarchical. There's stuff below there, and so when you click on these, this little icon here, it shows you all the fields that you can choose. So I'm going to choose CN and the DNS host name, useful stuff. And I'm going to choose the operating system, the operating system service pack, and operating system version, because those all have useful information on them. And I'm going to click OK. And you see I get the wind tells me whether this is the Windows Server or Windows 10 Enterprise. That's very useful. And let me sort this ascending. And then it tells me if I have a service pack, and it tells me the version number, which is also incredibly useful. So here's my Windows 10 Enterprises down here. OK. And then in user, which doesn't seem like it would make sense because this is a computer, but this is where this data is, um, you've got Last log on timestamp, a very important field, which I'll talk about in a second. And you have down here, user account control, also a very important field. I'm going to take those. And notice when this comes in, this is a date, but it you know gives you this decimal number, which you don't want. So you just change that to the date format. And anybody who's struggled with that in PowerShell, um, transferring that into a date time before knows that that's really nice that that works that way. Now you go into top, which um, it seems to have some of the same information, but it has information that is description. Where is that? Yeah, right here is also useful. And down here, we have when change and when created. Nice. OK. So then we get list. And this looks a little strange. It says list. And you're like, what? OK. But when you click on this, you expand, it will bring it in. OK. So we see our description now. And this other stuff. Uh, may have useful stuff in it, but right now I'm just going to um, remove those columns so we can talk about these more important fields. And distinguished name just comes in um, without expanding everything, anything. It's just there. So <clears throat> notice that it will tell you top dot when created top dot. So it tells you where you, it came from. And here is two I don't want right now. OK. And display name, it's not really useful So and for computers, so I'm going to get rid of that. And if you forget a field, notice over here in the M language, these applied steps, 
you could, where you said expanded user, you could just go in there and if you forgot something, it brings it up and you could select it. So, you know, you don't have to do it over again and it'll bring it in if you forgot something that you want here. Okay. Cancel. All right, so two important fields here that we need to talk about are the, over here, oh. and see, notice that when I'm, when I'm back on the step, it looks like I haven't changed that date, but if I go back here, I'm back where I should be, so just kind of be aware of that, that um, can confuse you. When a user account, I was looking to know. In this field, user account control, this will is allowed you to figure out whether a computer is enabled or disabled. Now, if you've been using the get ad computer PowerShell command, there is a field in there that says enabled. Well, enabled does not exist. It, it, that's just PowerShell making it easier for you. Okay. The way you really figure they're figuring this out is with this user account control. So let me show you what this really means. Now notice that the values I have here are 4096, 532480, and there's a 4098 in here somewhere because, yes, 4098. Okay, so three different versions. Okay, now in Excel, I made the spreadsheet to make this clear. Here's 4096, 4098, and here is um, five. 32480. Now, what do these mean? Well, you have to look at this user account, and I'll put this URL for these pages I'm showing in the um, YouTube notes. How to use the user account control flags to manipulate user properties. Okay, so it's bitwise, so you have to figure out, it gives you the decimal values, so you have to add up the bitwise values to figure out what it means. Now, notice that 4096, there's only one value there, and that's workstation trust account. Well, what does that mean? Basically, it's a workstation, an enabled workstation or server. This is a computer account for a computer that is running blah, 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 Windows, and it's a member of this domain, okay? Now, what does it mean when it's 4098? Well, it's 4096 plus 2, and 2 means account disabled. Oh, great. Okay, so that's how we figure out if a workstation or server is disabled. However, it might be disabled and it, you know, have additional other characteristics. Like, for instance, my domain controller is 532480. 532480. And that is as you can see, NS1, it's name server one. That is a domain controller. Okay, so how do I know it's a domain controller? Well, I go back to 532480 and I figure out what is the largest number that goes in there. And that is 524288, which says trusted for delegation. And I go down to that, trusted for delegation. And that means when this flag is set, the service account under which a service runs is trusted for Kerberos delegation. Oh, well, okay, that's nice. And then 8192 adds up to 532480. So what is 8192? 8192 is server trust account. And server trust account is this computer is a domain controller. So it's a domain controller and it's Kerberos because Kerberos is automatically, uh, delegation is already automatically enabled on the domain controller. So that's how you figure out that 532480 is a domain controller that has Kerberos, that is trusted for Kerberos delegation. And then you might see other things like other common ones are 528384, which is Kerberos enabled for delegation and 4096 and this is would be very common on servers and 63632 which is don't expire password 65536 and 4096 again this could be a server or workstation but almost 
always would be a server because you don't want to expire the password on machines that servers that are doing um, some process that can't be stopped. Okay, so that's the explanation for that curious field. And it's important to understand this stuff because PowerShell, when you everybody's been using that get AD computer for years, and that hides some of this complication. So you when you get into this raw data in Power BI, you don't understand it. Okay, so the other field that we want to understand is the last log on timestamp. Now there's three fields, and I found this great blog article that explains it, which is understanding the AD attributes, last log on, last log on timestamp, and last log on date. Well, come to find out, last log on date really does not exist. Last log on date is just last log on timestamp trans, um, transposed into a date time format by get AD computer. So just forget about last log on date. I mean, you can use it and get AD computer because last log on timestamp, you have to do the conversion yourself in PowerShell. So you just use last log on time date, last log on date. But it doesn't, you know, it really is just a converted last log on timestamp. And lo and behold, as you can see, Power BI does the conversion for you. All you have to do is choose the data type date time. So, you know, it, it does that conversion actually that PowerShell does, okay? And last log on is available, but the problem with last log on is it's just the last log on to that domain controller and it's not replicated. So in the vast majority of uh, ADs, Active Directories, there's more than one domain controller and usually they're geographically separated. So this last log on you can use if you're just look if you have just one domain controller or if you're just looking at one geographical area, but it's better to use the last log on timestamp. Okay, so then the issue with last log on timestamp is this is because the domain controllers does not want to be replicating every single time a user logs on to a computer, because that would just be too much replication. It does this really funky kind of calculation of when to update last log on timestamp. And it basically follows seven steps, and this explains it really well. And again, I'll put this URL in the in the YouTube notes. It if you if the your Active Directory administrator has not changed this MSDS logon time sick interval value, and I think almost nobody does, the default is 14. So it will follow this pattern. And basically what this says is it's 14 minus a random percentage of five. So this log last log on timestamp will update its like accurate, but minus 14 is basically that. So you have to, if you're saying, oh, how many people logged on in the last 30 days, you really have to say how many people logged on in the last 30 days plus 14 in, in order to capture everybody. So that's made pretty clear in this um, article here, ask the directory services team, what is it designed for and how it works? And it makes it really clear that it was designed for you to figure out, you know, where where there are stale machines, machines that have not been logged on in a lot in a long time. Okay. All right. So going back to Power BI. Power BI, as I mentioned before, if you have the gateway installed on your server, and this works for Power Apps and Power BI, the same gateway, you can, when you publish this you will be able from the Power BI service to schedule this to up this connection to Active Directory to update, which is really awesome. So that's just, I wanted to make that clear. I'm not going to show it, but um, I've done it and it works. Okay, thanks for watching.